from uh, here, we are gonna go ahead and uh, start working on the other two. I'm gonna go to the K&T mill, get it set up and start machining them right there. We're ready to go on the K&T. We're gonna do the sides first, get those milled, then we'll do this backside right there with the end mill. And then the last stop is uh, we'll cut the bottom of it there with the uh, face mill. All right, got my sandpaper in there to hold it, light it down good, and we are ready to roll. I measured the casting before we started here and I wanted to take equal amounts and I'll leave it a little over uh, nine inches. So we were gonna make it nine and one eight. So it looks like we've got about, about 45 thousandths that we'll take off this other side, which will be just about in line with what I took off this and we'll bring it down to nine and one eight. going to measure it with our calipers here it doesn't have to be anything precise or exact so it looks like we hit it within a couple thousandths of my target there so we're at 918 all right we'll go ahead and move to this uh, this edge here go ahead and get it cleaned up nice We've got our uh, three inch Tungaloy face mill in there and you can see here I've touched it. We're touching here, here, and here. So it's pretty well straight. And I took a measurement with my calipers just in this area right here. And we're getting around 857. That's what I measured it was around 857, around 850 right there. But I wanna make sure this is cleaned up nice and we get down past these corners. We'll probably take a total of like a hundred thousandths off that. We'll just try to make this thickness right up in here on the back side, uh, right around three quarters of an inch thick. Not even touching back here yet, so we're gonna move it back down. I wanna sling the chips that way, not on me, and we'll make another pass.
So this is the first one. We got our uh, passes done on there and it looks nice cleaned up it's got a really good feel to it so i think i'm going to stop on this one we got it where we want you know of course the last thing is we got to machine the uh the angle there on the front side that'll be our last setup to do so we'll go ahead and pull this one put the second one in there and get started on that i'll see if i can get you some better uh close-up shots of the uh, second operation or the second straight edge that we machine all right i uh i'd actually just talked to uh keith rucker because this is you know his design he's already been machining these things so what was really kind of confusing me is as to how i should approach this because there's still a lot of material right here on this edge where the bottom of it meets the angular side so i asked him how much he takes off he says he usually takes about a quarter inch off the bottom of it and he does machine it so that the angle and the bottom meet together there okay and there's not you know this radius and the way he explained it to me is that they had to modify this a little bit because the first casting, which was uh, mine, the one that's in the shaper, that's one of the early ones. There was still problems with those having hard spots in it. And Clark has done some uh, uh, revisions to try to help eliminate that with the newer castings. So these are the newer castings. And what he did was he added, um, they were having problems with them being hard on this edge right here. And so he added more material on the bottom and he added a radius right here on this front edge, which is intended to be just machined off there. So we're going to take it on down, uh, you know, closer to this uh, angular side right there. We'll, we'll probably go ahead and just take another hundred thousandths off the thickness because Keith said he takes a quarter inch off the bottom of it and then, and then he machines that to match. So I just wanted to go ahead and give you an update since I told you that's all we were going to do on that. But concerned about this meeting up right there. Just a little update on where we're at. You now we're working on the second one, that last pass that you probably saw there. I was running 22 inches a minute on the feed, so we're really moving across there pretty quickly to get it cut. I'm taking uh, six to two thousandths a pass uh, to get to our quarter inch there. And then, so I'm running 438 RPM, which was uh, giving me around 340, I think it was 344 surface feet per minute that the uh, cutter is running at. So I'll, I'll do this for the next couple of cuts 
and then uh, I'll make a finish pass across there, slow the feed rate down and make it look, you know, really nice and consistent. got the second one finished up in the mill here so we are going to take it out of here looks pretty nice I like the way the finish came out on all right so now we're gonna go ahead I think I am gonna use the shaper for this off it just makes it it just makes it a little easier to uh, set up so I can set it in the mill vise just like this right here clamp it gets the top of the straight edge the moving jaw here fixed jaw there and then we can turn my tool head over on uh, 45 degrees and finish cutting this out right there all right let's go ahead I'll, I'll bring it back once I get it set up and we start making these cuts all right we're set up to cut our angle there we're set at 45 degrees up on the tool head here and we are ready to make a cut, so let's go ahead and get started on it. Got everything locked. We are ready to go. good. You see how slick that worked? Cutting an angle on that. Setting this up, getting this shaper set up, I got this done a lot faster than if I was to go over here to that K&T and try to rig it up in V-blocks hold down clamps and things like that to cut it. 
and, and I'm not saying that that's wrong to do it that way or that's a bad way. I'm just showing you a really good example again, like I always do, on why this machine holds its weight around the shop. For doing things like this that are normally a little bit more tricky to do in a milling machine because of the setups that you got to do. They're able to set it right down that parallel and that machine face, clamp it in right there, and we got our angle. So now the finish isn't going to be as nice as a uh, as a mill finish there, but this is going to be a scraped surface. So as long as this machine nice and straight and true with the other side, that's all we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to, uh, cutting this until we get this completely cleaned up on this edge right here. We want it. We want it to match the bottom right there, and then we'll just file it. You know, get rid of the sharp edge. It's doing good. This works really well this way. This is my third and final pass on this angle right here. A uh, total of one eighth of an inch after we touched off on the uh, bare surface there. And it just barely left a little bit at the top corner. Just enough where I can run the file over there a couple times and just kind of make a flat right on the peak of it. So this should be my final cut here. bit got dull on that last cut there so we're gonna touch it up
Cisco. I'll go do a, uh, a hone on it with my diamond hone and we'll stick it back in there and finish it out. All right, there's our fresh, freshly ground tool bit. Doing a good job again. That's the problem with whenever you're doing these castings, trying to get through that scale. And some of these, some of these cuts like this, you're not actually getting through the scale on the uh, you know first pass right there, because we're trying to clean up that top edge. So you might have a little a chilled spot on there that uh, dulls the tool bit in an instant. got our two uh, customer squares finished up I haven't gone any further with mine because I, I decided what I'm going to do since I actually have uh, I have both the mill and the uh, shaper set up I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing and uh, go over there to the mill and take a little bit more off this mill the sides try to get out of that hard area right there and then I'll go over there and cut the angle just like you showed but you know you've already seen me do these so I didn't want to uh, just keep taking up screen time doing the same thing there but these turned out real nice. I'm real happy with the way they look. We already got them filed. We got that edge filed right there. I took it just to the, to the edge of that casting and I was able to just draw file it a little bit and leave just a nice little, just a little tiny flat right there. Good finish on it. So these should make some excellent Scraper projects. I don't know if that's what the uh, the guys are going to be doing with them or not, but uh, these are excellent Scraper projects right there. So anyway off camera. I'm gonna go finish mine out probably tomorrow and uh, That's about it and don't forget you can go to windyhillfoundry.com to uh, purchase these in uh, you know raw casted form and uh, just get with Clark and he will uh, hook you up. And I believe he also has a supplier over in Europe that he is sending his products to in bulk form. So these are, these and the, uh, the six inch machina squares are also available over overseas. Uh, just get with Clark over on his website and uh, he can get you one over there to you. All right, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you later.